Alright, just a quick update. Went to the primary. I have to go. Got a referral to go to the pulmonary specialist, but good news on that is, is I got my old pulmonary specialist that I actually liked. Um, my primary care physician I liked a lot. Uh, I think I can get along with this guy and all the tests he's running on me. He obviously cares. He does everything, he did everything to me, but jacked me up on a car lift and lube the rear end. I got to go in for a colonoscopy because it's been 11 years since I've had one of them, so I've got to get the old heave-ho. Woohoo. And then I got to go in and see the pulmonary specialist. I just went and gave more blood. I've got to go back and see the infectious disease doctor uh, after they get the pick line out, get her to send the okay to him that that's all clear. And then I've got to go to a blood specialist, a hemo somethingologist that specializes in just the blood. Um, he said, well, did they say where the blood clots came from? And I said, no, they didn't. And he's, I said, you know, I don't get a lot of movement with the emphysema and everything. Uh, I was thinking maybe that was it. And he said, well, I'd really like to just to be safe and cover all of our bases, have you go to this hemo, whateverologist of blood. That's all he does is blood. He's a vampire or something. A one, a two, a three vials. Oh, 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 oh. But I go see him. And I guess they'll try to figure out where the blood clots come from. Then the pulmonary specialist can see about the fluids that hardened up in my lower left lung and give me a nebulizer or something. You know, maybe oxygen, I don't know. Uh, but I've got all kinds of doctors to go to and all kinds of things to do. And you think about the cost of everything, and then I think about being pissed at me because I didn't go, and then it's like, fuck the cost, you know, so... Uh, but I'm not happy about the old heave ho. Last time they did one of them colonoscopies, Amy said, "What flavor you want?" I said, "Cherry." Well, then she come back with pineapple because they were out of cherry, and I had to drink like 30 gallons of that stuff, and you shit like a Christmas goose. And, and then they give you this stuff that puts you out, but you're awake. And I can remember I was pushing on the rail on the bed and the rail cracked. And somebody said, does that hurt? And I said, fuck yeah, it hurts. You got a mile of rotor rooter up my ass. And next thing I know, I was waking up in recovery and the, the nurse said, you don't have cancer. And then she looked at the other nurse and said, and he loves his wife. So I guess I was doing a lot of did, 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 mouth going faster than a duck's ass while I was on that shit like I always do but I'm not looking forward to that at all getting a fucking pipeline shoved up my ass uh, and I don't know I, that's all I remember is snapping the rail on that bed and telling them yeah it hurts you got a mile of rotor rooter up my ass what the fuck's it supposed to do feel good it was either that or I could poop in this thing and send it in. He said, but if it comes back positive, you got to go in for the Roto-Rooter anyways. So I might as well go in and get the damn Roto-Rooter done. And I know the pulmonary specialist is going to have me blow into that machine again. And I did that years ago. And it was a workout. I mean, a serious workout. The stress test, all that stuff just broke me down and that was years ago he's gonna say son 
I remember he, he told me, he said, when, I said, Doc, I can't can't breathe good. He said, son, someday you're going to look back on these days and you're going to think of them as your golden years. And I wish I would have listened to him back then, but uh, Doc's going to say, son, when the doc asked me, son, how did you get this condition? I said, hey, saw bones, leave me alone. It's a family tradition. So don't ask me, Mark, why do you drink? And Mark, why do you roll smoke? Why must you live out the songs that you wrote? Stop and think it over. Put yourself in my unique position. If I get stoned and sing all night long, it's a family tradition. Tennessee plates. Tennessee. Seven blount. Volunteer Auto Group. Don't see many Tennessee plates around here. See a lot of Illinois, of course, because it's just right across the river. A lot of Indiana, because every time I see an Indiana plate, I go wander Indiana, wander Indiana from the commercials. But do, do I got to do anything else? Not today. Tomorrow. No, I just named off all the stuff I got to do. Uh, that there's, there's so much stuff there. Uh, infectious disease doctor, that's first. The whole heave whole colonoscopy. That can be delayed a, a while. It can you know, be delayed a while? Yes. So what, I, what I want to happen is all the hospital bills are hit because the old heave ho we won't have to pay for. Right, and he said that. I got. I don't. I got to see him for like six months. He'll call me. Right. As long as your blood work comes back fine, right. you, you won't have to. And I got. To I got months. my med, meds filled for my yeah. blood thinners. And um. So, Doctor Padre, the infectious doctor, then set up an appointment with the hematologist. The hematologist, that's what the he is. Doctor. The blood doctor's a hematologist. And, and then eventually Dr. Suma. Then Dr. Suma. And then colonoscopy. Who's Dr. Suma? Pul pul pulmonary. No, I need to get in and see him soon. Yes, I know. I like But him. we need to take care of infectious disease doctor. Um, and then we can set up pulmonary uh, and blood doctor. Blah, blah, blah. I, I, I really like my primary though. He's cool. He gets 4.9 stars on his reviews out of five. And I told him he just might get five stars now. But I didn't get a sucker and I didn't get a band aid with a little cartoon character. I'm a little disappointed about that. But he seems like somebody that cares. He definitely is thoroughly giving me a look over. The only thing he didn't do is spread my butt cheeks and look up my butthole. I mean, he's he, 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 he was recovering all the bases, which shows that he cares about my health. And he's cool. He seems very nice. Uh, I can get along with the guy. And I'm, we can develop a thing where I can trust him, you know. That's important to me. A lot of times I don't get along with people. And I went through like seven psychiatrists and in like five months out in Arizona. They put, the last one, Daniel, put me on this medication and I was shaking so bad that I couldn't even take a drink of water. I mean, just shaking. And Amy said, stop taking that med. So I stopped taking it and I go in there and we're in this little tiny room and he's sitting to my left, I'm sitting up against the wall and then the door's right to my right. And I mean, this is a small room, about the size of a jail cell. 
And he says, how's the meds going? And I said, well, I stopped taking them. And before I could even explain why, he starts screaming at me. I mean, yelling at me loudly. Right. When I Can talked I to the and pharmacist, and you couldn't even explain that to Amy, me. you don't got to explain yourself. I was violently shaking. That's a bad side effect. You don't have to explain yourself about that. But he starts screaming at me before I could explain to myself why I stopped taking it. I mean, Amy works in the medical field. When you're violently shaking, you can't even take a drink of water. It's not a good sign. So I stopped taking it, and then this motherfucker starts screaming at me. And I flipped out on him. I said, motherfucker, you got a stack of papers about eight inches thick right there that says that I'm willing to, I'm, I'm have to reach, reach, just reach out and touch you at any given fucking moment. You're going to start screaming at me, motherfucker? I said, I quit taking them because I was shaking so bad I couldn't even take a drink of water. And he kept staring at something. I'm like, what the fuck is, I kept looking to see what he was looking at. He was looking at the doorknob that was to my right. I said, you will not make it, motherfucker. And then the next time I went in, there was a cool biker chick that was the receptionist there at Miranda Health Center. And I I walked in and I said, I'm here to see Daniel. And she said, Daniel's not your doctor no more. He said, you make him feel nervous and did the quotation marks things. And then I had to go and talk to my case manager. And she was cool. She's full-blooded Navajo. And she said, Mark, you gotta be careful. And I said, why? She goes, well, you've got a, you're not just diagnosed with a mental illness, you're diagnosed with an SMI. She that. said, it, it, don't worry about it. At any given time, if oh, they think you, you're a threat to, to yourself or something, they can come to take you and put you somewhere. And I said, well, when's my out date? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, how long? When do I get out? And she said, when they think you're better. And I didn't like the sound of that shit at all. I mean, so what I do now is if I don't get along with them, I just say, well, I'm gonna change doctors or whatever. I try to control myself. But this motherfucker was literally screaming at me. It's like, dude, you're tripping. I mean, literally, he's got a folder that thick of all the places I was in when I was younger and shit. You got a big stack of papers right there saying that, that fucking, I got intermittent explosive disorder and everything else, and you're going to start screaming at me, you dumb motherfucker? Give you an education and respect, you know? You got you, that psychiatric degree, but your bedside manner sucks cock. But yeah, he, he kept staring at that damn, staring at that damn doorknob. I said, ain't no way you're going to make it, man. You will not make it. And Amy was right telling me to stop taking it. You know, that was one of the bad side effects from it. It was like I had Parkinson's or something. But we're home. I'm going to get off here. I just wanted to give everybody an update. Hope everybody's having a good day. I'm going to try to get something to eat, and then I'm going to go maybe take a walk with Amy here in a little bit. It's nice and cool today. Just take a little walk around the block or something, get some exercise. But much love and respect to all of you.